Hi, I'm Clay Kilgore from the Washington County Historical Society, and today we're talking about the Native Americans of Western Pennsylvania. So we're talking about the Native Americans of, of Western Pennsylvania, and it's uh, kind of something we don't think about a lot, uh, that in the 18th century, this was, uh, in Western Pennsylvania, this was the frontier of the United States. And so uh, prior to the 1740s, 1750s, you're going to find a large population of Native Americans here. And now, the, the, the strange thing is, is you're not going to find them being permanently inhabiting this, this location, but they're using it as, as a hunting grounds. And so we want to talk a little bit about that and about their interactions with the, uh, with the settlers that would have come out here. So we're going to jump back a little bit. Uh, and we're not going to go back in the prehistory. Uh, you know, we could, we could go back and talk about Metacroft, which dates to, you know, 15,000 years ago. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to start really, let's say about 300 years ago. We'll, we'll go back to the, to the 16, 1700s uh, and start there. What you're going to find is that the, this is Native American territory. You're not going to see any settlers out here, really. Uh, you know, there's going to be settlers that, that are on the East Coast. Uh, and then as time goes by, as the population increases along the coast, they're going to start pushing a little bit further west. And so you're going to see those tribes that initially would have been on the East Coast being pushed out here to the frontier. So tribes like the Delaware, or, or as they would have been known, the, the Lenny Lenape, uh, they lived on, in New Jersey, uh, in Delaware, and then in the very eastern portions of Pennsylvania. But as settlers started coming in, you know, you get into the, to the 1600s, as settlers start uh, moving in and they're, they're living along the coast, they're pushing these tribes a little bit further west. And so the Delaware now are going to be shoved to... Uh, to like the central Pennsylvania area and then the settlers keep coming so you get into the 1700s and the the settlers are still moving further to the uh, to the west and so these Delaware tribes are pushed even further now they're gonna be they're gonna run into other tribes because out here in the 1600s you're gonna have the Monongahela peoples you're gonna see um, uh, what would become the Shawnee Indians, uh, even from up in New York State, uh, where the Seneca uh, are being pushed down or are kind of curving down into the north, uh, northwestern part of Pennsylvania. So there's a lot of different tribes in here, uh, and, and they're all broken up. When I say the Monongahela peoples, that's a lot of smaller tribes. But what ends up happening is as the Delaware are being pushed further to the west, and the Shawnee are starting to rise up out of the south, they incorporate these smaller tribes into their own tribe. And so the Monongahela peoples kind of disappear. By 17, 1725, they're, they're pretty much gone. They've been incorporated into the, to the Delaware, the Shawnee, and even in some cases, they've moved north uh, into, the, into Erie, the area of Erie today, and been incorporated into the Seneca peoples. Well, the settlers don't stop. You know, they don't stop in the east. They continue to push further to the west. And as they do, they push these tribes further and further. And so the Delaware end up being located in the Ohio, uh, the Ohio River Valley. So eastern Ohio, what is now the West Virginia Panhandle, uh, Pennsylvania, western Pennsylvania, they're kind of in, in that area. And they're sharing that with the Shawnee. The Shawnee are, are mainly in Ohio, but they're hunting in western Pennsylvania. And so that's kind of what you're going to see in the 1750s, 1760s here in western PA. So how are the Native Americans living? Uh, you know, we, uh, it, I remember, uh, you know, when I was in school, we think of, uh, you know, the Plains Indians with the long houses and the way they were living. And that's not really the same here. They're, they're living a little bit different here in Western Pennsylvania. They had what they called wiki ups or, um, or huts that they would build. So these are kind of, imagine they would take uh, saplings. So trees that are, you know, about that big around, uh, you know, three or four inches at most. And they're gonna bury them sticking straight up in the ground. So you're gonna have a circular um, uh, formation of these trees, these saplings. And then what they would do is they would pull them together into the center and tie them off. 
So you have almost this like dome structure. Then they would take bark, they would strip the bark off of trees and layer them onto that, that framework of saplings because they would not only pull those towards the center, they would weave other smaller uh, limbs within those, those larger saplings that were pulled together. So you take that, uh, that bark and you start at the bottom and you start layering it up towards the top. So it's gonna overlap. So your bottom one's here, the next one's gonna lay on top, then the next one this way. And they continue that all the way up towards the center and they would leave an opening in the center though. So what that does is by that uh, overlapping, by that layering over top, it kind of acts like shingles. So rain, snow, whatever it might be, would lay on there, but it would run off. It wouldn't run into the, into the wiki. And then you're also going to see, as I said, that opening in the center because they're going to build a fire. They're going to have a small fire pit in the center of the, of the wiki so that not a big fire, but a small fire that they can heat it with and all the smoke's going to come up the dome and out the top. Uh, and so they're going to use those uh, as, as, as hunting huts. So when they're traveling through the area, they might build these to stay in while they're hunting before they go back to their villages. In their villages, they lived in a variation of the longhouse. Uh, it was same idea, take poles uh, or small uh, saplings, bury them in the ground, except you're going to do it in a straight row. And then you're going to bring them together in the center and then they would put bark over top of them. Or later on, they would build a variation of a log house, uh, basically taking on some of the characteristics of the settlers' uh, log uh, cabins that they would build. They would put uh, poles in the, in the ground and then lay big trees in between them. Uh, and so you would have two walls that were kind of like stacked logs that went up and then a framework of saplings that they would then cover. And they would down, down the center of those, they would build a trench, they would dig a trench actually, and they would have fires all, all along that, that would, uh, the smoke would go up and then out the center because they would leave portions of it open. And so you would have along the edges of that, that trench, that's where you would have um, you know, foods that were drying. They would, you know, even if they were smoking meats, they would have the, the, uh, the, the natives themselves would sleep in there, would stay in there. Uh, and that was their home. That's, that's kind of the way that they, they would live. They used, uh, prior to the settlers coming out here, prior to, I guess I should say, prior to the traders coming out here, uh, they used stone tools. Uh, they used a lot of flint. So they had spears and uh, the bow and arrow that had uh, flint uh, heads on them, either spear heads or arrow heads. They had drills. Uh, they would make these drills uh, that, were, that were made out of flint that had just a... Um, a long piece of flint that came to a point, had a, uh, a small uh, uh, handle that came off of it, and you could spin it or use a bow to spin it, and they could actually drill holes using that. Uh, they had stone tools, so their, uh, their axes, their war clubs would be made out of stone. Uh, and so they would take, and it's called napping, they would nap it and bring that stone to a pretty sharp edge. But even still, if you're cutting down a tree, you're not really always uh, kind of say you're not really cutting down a tree, you're just kind of beating it into submission. Eventually it just gives up and falls over. Uh, and so these are the types of tools that they're gonna be using early on. But in the 1730s, 1740s, you see traders coming out here. Uh, you know, the Morgan Trading Company uh, sends people out here. There's French traders, there's English traders. And they're bringing for the first time iron tools. Uh, and iron implements. So they're going to be coming out and, and what, they, uh, what they introduced to the, to the Native Americans are things like axes, iron axes, or tomahawks. You know, the thing that we, we always think of when we, when we talk about Native Americans, you know, we always think about them having a tomahawk. Well, they, they didn't have those originally. Those were traded to them by the settlers and by the traders that came out here. And so these iron tools that they now have if you go from stone to a stone axe to an iron axe, I mean, those are worlds apart. And so the, the, uh, the Native Americans became kind of dependent on these traders for these iron tools that they're going to be using. Uh, and so, you know, the, like I said, this thing that we always think about with Native Americans, the tomahawk actually was introduced to them uh, by the settlers. And then later on, they would also have... Uh, they would have weapons uh, like muskets. They would have muskets that the uh, traders would trade to them. 
And so they did have muskets that they, they could use. Now these muskets that they had weren't like the ones the settlers would have. They weren't rifled, they were smooth bore. They were the older surplus ones that weren't being used anymore. Uh, sometimes they were cracked and damaged. And what the English traders did is they painted the stalks, the wood portions of them, they would paint it blue or red. And the Native Americans loved it. They loved how colorful it was. So they, they thought it was great. But really what, the, uh, what the, the traders were doing were just hiding all the issues, all the imperfections in, in the guns themselves. And so what you end up with is uh, the, the Native Americans having these, these muskets, these trade muskets. What they didn't have a lot of was powder. Uh, you know, so the, the English traded them the muskets, but kind of didn't want to trade them the powder because they didn't want them to be able to use the muskets against them. And so the settlers out here got to the point where they were very familiar uh, with the Native Americans and they could tell you when it was a native, whether it was a Shawnee or whatever it was, firing one of their muskets because it made a different sound. It made more of a popping sound instead of a bang because they didn't have as much powder. They would load it with a lot less powder uh, than what black powder than what you would actually need. And so what ends up happening is that you, you have these settlers that are pushing further and further west and the Native Americans are being pushed further and further west. There were some friendly tribes. Uh, the Delaware tried to, uh, tried to make treaties with the settlers, with the English, uh, and, and tried to be friends with them. In some cases, they even tried to incorporate English traditions and customs and religion into their own uh, religion and own customs and traditions, thinking that you know, maybe the settlers would be, the English would, would not push them further west if they kind of incorporated themselves into the English. It, it didn't work too well for them. It was a nice idea, it just didn't work real well. So as the English kept pushing further and further west, uh, the, the Native Americans kept getting pushed further west. And so the last tribe you're really gonna find here in Washington County, there was a Delaware tribe uh, that uh, was known, uh, that, that had a, uh, a chief by the name of Catfish. His name was uh, Tungonquin. People had a hard time saying it, so they called him Catfish. And there's a, a little stream in Washington called Catfish uh, Creek, and that was named after Catfish because their camp was right in Washington, uh, down where Washington and Jefferson, uh, Jefferson's uh, football field is. That was Catfish Camp. And so that was kind of the last tribe you're gonna see here in Western Pennsylvania. Um, the Shawnee attempted to not let the settlers push any further west, uh, so they, um, they were more violent towards the settlers. And when you, um, when you learn about the, the settlers on the frontier, about how, the, how they had to build uh, up to 45 different settler forts out here to protect against the Native American raids, they had to do that because of the Shawnee. The Shawnee were attacking the frontier settlements and they were attacking for, for several reasons. One, they were looking for powder. Uh, you know, they were looking for powder to load their muskets or lead to make the musket balls with. They were looking for supplies. And they were also looking to push the settlers out of this region. They were also wanting to get their lands back. And so uh, you do have a lot of confrontations between the settlers and, these, and the Shawnee. You know, we always look at it probably as the, the Shawnee being in the wrong. They were the ones attacking the settlements. But, you know, we were the ones taking over their land. You know, as, as we pushed further west, we signed treaties that said we wouldn't come over the Allegheny Mountains or we wouldn't cross the Ohio River. And we did, you know, we kept taking more and more land, you know, as the settlers would come out here and see this, this fertile, beautiful land across the river, they went and they took it. And so the Shawnee were fighting uh, to keep their land, you know, what they claimed to be theirs. Uh, and they had a better claim to it probably than we did, uh, but we had the resources, you know, eventually what happens is how we stake a full claim to Western Pennsylvania and the Ohio territory, uh, there's a, a group called Wayne's, uh, Wayne's Legions, and that was the United States Army at the time in the 1790s uh, under the command of General Anthony Wayne. And Anthony Wayne takes his legions out in Ohio, fights a war uh, against the Native Americans, and at the Battle of Fallen Timbers in 1794, he defeats the Native Americans, and that kind of puts an end to, the, to the, what we called the uprisings, but really it was them defending their lands, kind of puts an end to it. And uh, with the Treaty of Greenville in 1795, all the Western territory is given to, um, to the United States at that time, not, not, no longer the English. 
And so we stay claim to what is Western Pennsylvania, Ohio, Western Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, that whole area now becomes uh, our land. And the Native Americans have to push even further west. So the tribes that were the Seneca peoples, the Shawnee, the Delaware, they go further west and some of them become down in, in Oklahoma. Some of the Shawnee become what's, what we know as the Cherokee. And that's kind of probably the most famous tribe we think of. Um, but the Cherokee uh, you know, form out of the Shawnee and we shove them even further west and eventually we push them all the way to the coast and, and put them on reservations. But they made a stand here. They tried in Western Pennsylvania to make a stand, uh, just they weren't successful uh, you know, and ended up being pushed even, even for, or further to the west. So, so that's kind of a brief overview of what you would find in Western Pennsylvania when it came to Native Americans. Uh, you know, and, and again, they started on the East Coast get pushed out here and finally get pushed out uh, altogether. But you're gonna find the Monongahela peoples, the Delaware, the Shawnee, portions of the, the, uh, the, the Six Nations, uh, the, the Seneca. You're gonna find you know, um, them having all ties to Western Pennsylvania. But for the most part, the thing, the thing to think about is Western Pennsylvania wasn't, by the 1725, uh, 1730s, you don't see really Native Americans living here that much. It's more of just a hunting ground. So that's our, our talk on the Native Americans of Southwestern Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs>